What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of our deep learning with Python, TensorFlow, and Keras tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is how to load in an outside data set. The outside data set we're going to use is this uh, cats and dogs data set from Microsoft. It was for initially a Kaggle challenge. And the idea is to take pictures of cats and dogs and then identify them by feeding them through a neural network and have the neural network say whether or not that's a cat or a dog. So go ahead and download that data set. And then once you have that data set, let me uh, pull up an example here. Uh, what you should see is like this. So uh, you should get two directories. These two I've added, these two things I've added in. But what you should have is cat and dog. And then in here, you should have some like images of cats and, and dogs. And in this case, a bunch of dogs. So um, each one has like 12,500 samples. So you should have plenty of examples to teach a model what's a cat and what's a dog. So go ahead and download those, extract those, and then we'll come over here and we will get to work. So we're gonna import, first of all, NumPy is MP. We're gonna import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. We're gonna import OS. We're gonna import CV2 and from, and actually just CV2. Uh, if you don't have NumPy, pip install NumPy. If you don't have matplotlib, pip install matplotlib. And if you don't have CV2, you will need to do a pip install opencv python all right once we have those basically i'm going to use matplotlib just to show the image uh, we're going to use os to iterate through directories and join paths cv2 to show or i'm sorry to do some image operations and then numpy to do various array operations so uh, the first thing we're going to do is specify a data directory uh, my data is located in my X files under data sets and pet images. Then we're going to have categories. Uh, the two categories we've got to deal with here are uh, dog and cat. I can't leave those different. And in fact, we should probably just double quote since we double quoted the other ones. So now what we want to do is iterate through all of the our, our examples of, of dog and cat. So the way we're going to do that is for category in categories, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say path is os.path.join data dir and whatever that category is. So basically this just gets our us into our basically the, the path to cats or dogs dir. Then what we want to say is for image in os.listdir that path. So it'll just be a bunch of these images basically that are named by just number. Um, once we have that, we can just iterate through all of those images. So uh, the images are, we can convert them immediately to an array with cv2.imread. And we can read those with os.path.join. And we're going to join path and image now. And that's the full path to that image. Then what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to grayscale. So we read in um, that image, and then we say cv2 cv2.imread underscore grayscale. So we're going to convert it to grayscale because one, uh, you know, RGB data is three times the size of grayscale data, and I just don't think that uh, color is that essential in this specific task. In a lot of identifying tasks, it is, but at least in the, you know the difference between a cat and a dog. Um, yes, they have a lot of color, but does the is the color the differentiating factor between cats and dogs? I don't think so. If it was like, you know, dog versus some reptile or something like that, then yeah, probably you'd want to bring in um, color. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, the next thing that we want to do is like we can at least we can graph this and, and look at what we're dealing with just to make sure it's what we expect. So plt .im show image array cmap equals gray. Again, the only reason I'm using matplotlib here is because um, I don't know how to do like a inline in a Jupyter Notebook uh, with CV2. I'm sure there's a way. If somebody knows it, go ahead and leave it below. Then I'm just going to throw a break here and a break just so we can look at this picture real quick. So as you can see, it's a grayscale image of a dog. No surprise there. It's kind of what we expected. Um, also, our data, this is what our data looks like, image array. Okay, just a bunch of numbers. Now, what if we didn't convert it to grayscale? So in this case, you can see it's just a bunch of number, you know, pixel values here. 
in this 2D array. What if we didn't do grayscale though? And what if we just did this? <laughs> Blue dog. Um, now, no longer is it 2D because these are actual RGB, or actually probably BGR, I believe is how CB2 reads things. And that's why this is all, why the dog is uh, blue in the photo. Anyway, uh, we're gonna, we are gonna keep grayscale though. And just take a note, you know, like what, how that changes your, your actual data. So for, for example, we could say image array dot shape for example there, and it's a 398 by 500, which brings us to the next problem we have, which is you can even tell, like some of the, all these dogs are like different shaped photos. Some are landscape, some are portrait, some are square, and we really need everything to be normalized at all, uh, you know, if at all possible. There are ways to have variable sized images to make classifications on, um, but in the interest of keeping things as simple as possible, uh, we'd like to make everything the same shape. So that's what we're going to do next. Now we have to de decide on a shape. So for example, what if we say image size 50? So maybe we're going to try every image is a 50 by 50. So the way we would do that is just uh, new array equals cb2.resize. And we resize the image array. And then we do image size, image size. And that's our new array. And we really should look at it. Uh, so m show. Uh, new array and then C map for the color map. Oh my gosh, can we get this please? Uh, gray and then PLT dot show. So I can still tell that's a dog, but eventually we, we can't, right? If I, we do 10, make it a 10 by 10, I can't tell that's a dog. I don't think anybody can. If we go with uh, 20, still probably not. Maybe though, you, you might be able to get away with it. Um, at 30, it's still pretty hard, but now you can start to see like, you know, like the forearm or I guess the wrist, you know, the area after the wrist, the hand of a dog, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, that's usually longer in dogs. So I could make this classification at this point, but you know, at 50, I'm pretty comfortable, but you do have to be, be careful because this dog takes up quite a bit of the image. Whereas some of these might not like, for example, I'm, I'm sure I can find one eventually. Um, this one's a pretty small, he blends into the bench quite a bit. Uh, most of these are pretty pretty well done actually, but sometimes it'll it won't it'll be a smaller part of the image, um, and it'll be a little harder when we make it a small image. Look at this camo dog. <laughs> anyway, um, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna I guess I'll stick with 50. And we'll see how that goes. So uh, once you decide on the size that you want to go with, uh, let's go ahead and create our training data set. So I'm going to say training data equals an empty list. And then I'm going to start this function that I'm going to call create training data. And I'm going to give myself, uh, I'm just going to say pass. I'm just going to give myself some space here. There we go. Okay, create training data. And what we want to do is now iterate through everything and build it, um, the data set. So I'm just going to take this copy and then come down here paste it in, tab this over. Um, now, the next thing that we need to do is we, our neural network, kind of like in our MNIST data set, right? Did we, we, we have to map, basically we got the features as numbers, but our label, our classification is not yet a number, right? We can't map things to a string dog or a string cat, right? We, we need to map things to uh, some sort of numerical value. So we're gonna say zero is a dog, one, is a cat. And the way we can do that is we can just get the index value of dog and cat um, and make that index value in that list, the arbitrary classification. It doesn't matter which one is the one and which one is the zero. It's just, you have to convert to a number. So the way we're going to do that is I'm just going to say class underscore num is going to be equal to categories dot index, index lowercase, uh, whatever that category is. So zero for a dog, one for a cat. Then we're going to iterate over the images. I, we don't need to show them. We don't need to break anymore. And uh, all I want to do now is resize with this new array. So we'll come down here. We'll perform that resizing operation. And uh, I think that's about it. So now we just want to uh, append this to our training data list above there. So training underscore data dot append. And we want to append our new underscore array and whatever that classification is. So class underscore num. 
Okay, so we wanna do that for everything. Uh, the other thing we probably should do is for image, we, we probably should encase this in a trine, except I've been through this data set before and some of the images are like broken. So except exception is E. And you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna, I'm just gonna pass actually. I already know that there's some that are broken. You Normally you would throw the exception so you could read it and figure out what's going wrong. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pass. Uh, but there's like, you'll get like an OS error and some other warning information and all that fun stuff. But I'll just pass for now. Create training data. And then um, running that. And then whenever that's done, let's go ahead and print, print the len of training data. Now, a couple of things we should talk about is the balance of your training data. So it's really important that your training data, especially like in the case of classification, is properly balanced. So in the case of a binary choice like we have, cats and dogs, you wanna make sure you have 50-50, right? Uh, just as many cats and just as many dogs. Now, sometimes you can have different numbers and then when you train the model, you can inform the model and say, hey, these are our class weights. So they have weights that you can pass. And the way this will work is it will weight the you know the loss a little a little differently uh, in an attempt to handle for your imbalanced data set but if at all possible you definitely want to balance the data set instead so but sometimes like let's say you had so let's say you had a data set that was 75 percent dog 25 percent cat you feed that through the neural network and the neural network's going to learn really quickly just always predict dog and you'll be 75 percent right and then when it tries to learn from there it's going to have a really really hard time so um so if you balance it, so it's a perfect 50-50, you'll be better. The next thing you want to do is shuffle the data. So we've got the training data, but as you can see, the first thing we did was iterate over the category, uh, then go from there. So everything's do all dogs and then all cats. Well, if you feed that to the neural network, it's going to learn, okay, only predict dog. And then it switches over to cats and it's like, oh, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Oh, okay, cat, cat, everything's a cat. And then it just keeps going back and forth and it's probably not going to learn very well that way either. So we definitely want to shuffle the data. So we can import random and then we can do a random dot shuffle. There we go. Uh, training data. Since training data is a list, mutable. There it is. It's already uh, shuffled at this point. So for example, we could now uh, for, I don't know, sample in training data, we, we can check that our um, labels are correct by doing um, print uh, sample one. So this will be the label. So sample zero with would be, oh, we went through them all. Anyways, sample zero would be, um, and let's just do up to 10 here, would be the actual image array itself. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to run the whole thing all over again. Well, we'll just wait for that. That's fine. So now let's do the, um, let, let's take this data now. And now that it's shuffled, let's pack it into the variables that we're going to use right before we feed it into our neural network. So uh, that's going to be an empty list for X and an empty list for Y. In general, capital X is your feature set. Lowercase Y is your labels. Uh, sometimes you'll see train X, test Y, and like all these kinds of things. And we, we, could, we can split those up, but we can still, we can actually um, specify a validation set. Um, so you don't have to split them up. Sometimes you, you may do that anyways, but uh, you don't really have to do that. So you can use built-in methods to, to properly do an out of sample test. Okay. So now we're going to say four uh, features label in training data. We're going to x dot append uh, features, y dot append dot append uh, label. So we build those out into lists and we really can't pass, especially for the features, we, we can't pass a list to the neural network. Um, I wish we could. I think we should be able to, especially if we're using a high level API like Keras. It's kind of silly that we still got to do this. Um, hopefully soon one day this will change. Uh, but we need to convert both things. Well, actually, Y can stay a list, but X has to be, first of all, a NumPy array. So let's go ahead and do that. So X equals NP array X, but also we need to reshape it to be negative one by the shape of each X. Um, so negative one is just how many features do we have? Well, you can say negative one and that's kind of a catch all. It's anything, any number. And then we can say, uh, we know the shape of the data to be image size by image size. You could also do like x1, uh, 0, x1, 1, and so on. But anyways, we'll, we'll just go with this. Um, 
So image size by image size and then by one. So this one is because it is a grayscale. And just as a, a, a bit of a homework challenge for you guys, um, I encourage you to attempt to make a convnet to work rather than with grayscale, work with color images. So see if you can convert what we're going to build here from a grayscale convolutional neural network to be color. So just as an aside, that, that might be the hardest thing to remember to do is change that one to a three because then it would be three values. So that's what we have to do. Again, I think this reshape is kind of silly. I wish somebody from, hopefully Keras, eventually would, would make this not be a requirement. <laughs> we should not have to deal with that shape. It should just intelligently shape it. Because it's always the same kind of thing. Like we always have to do this same step uh, and it's silly. Okay, so once we have our data, uh-oh, um, X, when did we convert it? First of all, when did we define an X? When did it get converted? When did we use an X? I'm just tripping out, I guess, because I never ran this. I don't know when we had an X. So why? How? When was X uh, a thing? Oh man, someone's got to help me out with that one. When did X become a NumPy array before this was run? Uh, did we ever use an X variable? Or maybe it's because I'm redoing this and X already did have a, yeah. So the first recording got screwed up. That's what happened. <laughs> Man, that was killing me. I was like, wait a second. So X already was, if I should have restarted the kernel. Anyway, moving along. Uh, okay, the last thing that we want to do is we want to save these. So you don't want to generate your data. Like you don't want to like do all this crunching and reshaping and all that every single time. Because chances are you're going to be like tweaking your model. So the reality of neural networks is that you don't have the answer right away or you're not working on a problem that's as easy as the one that we're about to be working on. So it's going to be, it's not going to be as simple as like, oh, just throw this model together, use exactly these, uh, you know, features and, and this many nodes, this many layers. You're not going to know. You're going to be tweaking. So you don't want to have to be rebuilding your data set every time. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to, once we've created our training data, we're just going to import pickle. And then in some way, you don't have to use pickle. We could numpy.save or whatever. Somehow save your data. So you don't have to redo it every time. So pickle out equals open. Uh, and I'm going to open x.pickle. x.pickle. wb. Pickle.dump. We want to dump x where to pickle out. And then pickle, uh, pickle out.close. And then we want to do the same thing for the Y. So I'm just going to do Y, come down here, Y. And then later, if we want to read it back in, you can do something like this, like pickle underscore in equals open uh, X dot pickle RB. Uh, and then, uh, or really, no, we kind of did an extra step there. But anyway, X equals pickle dot load. Uh, pickle in, okay, and then x1, for example, is our image, and then x, uh, so that'll be um, our, our feature, basically, so that would be our image, and then y1 would be the label for x1. Anyways, that's all for now. What we're going to do is in the next tutorial, we're going to take this data set that we've you know, compiled and then we're going to feed it through our convolutional neural network after going over some of the basics of convnets and all that. So uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, something you think could be done better, um, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next tutorial where we are uh, going to feed it through a neural network and hopefully uh, get our correct classifications. So till next time.